amazing all of a sudden the silence is definite they're all mute they're gone where did they go they won't let me talk to them they won't let me interview them what's the problem I know this the book says that the wicked flee when no man pursue but the righteous are as bold as a lion and what do we find too many times more often than not today we find a bunch of barking dogs and then when you challenge them and you put them out there and you tell them, you'll give them the time of day, all of a sudden, they don't want to talk anymore. I'm going to tell you the reason why they want to talk. Because they want to constantly continue to keep deceiving you. Well, apparently, I am afraid. Uh, I am deceiving you. I don't want to have this conversation. You all recall that I had did a response. Matter of fact, where, where this all started, where this precipitated was when I had a conversation, we had vocab Malone, and we were just talking about different Hebrew Israelites, and he happened to mention this group, Straightway Church, or I'm not sure what they're called, Straightway something. They kind of thrusted themselves kind of in the spotlight when they did a little march, their own little march. It wasn't a million man march. It was like the five or 10 man march, and they went to Jason Whitlock's station. And when they got there, they kind of barged in and so forth. I don't know if it was kind of a, an intimidation thing or what have you. So he spoke to them. And so we spoke a little bit about it. And their main issue, though they're not as kind of racially focused as other Hebrew Israelites, their main focus, without question, is marriage. And when I say marriage, theirs is focused on men having multiple wives. Now, it cannot be multiple wives here in America on paper, can't be multiple women's names on different marriage licenses because that will give you a quick way to go to jail. You're not going to do that. You're not going to test the system that way. And so what they'll do is they'll have maybe one woman's name on a certificate and then another woman to the side. They'll call her concubine or what have you. We call that in the modern vernacular a side chick. We call that a mistress. We call that, you know, the other lady. That's what we call that. They want to say it's biblical. Listen, fine. Now, he went through a little rant. I had tried to have a conversation with him. Now, I want to kind of refresh you guys when I put out the video uh, highlighting this and their two main issues. And I'll talk about the two issues that I was really concerned with that I thought was a problem. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know what those were, but after I put the video out, after I had a discussion, where is it at? What I did was, if I can find the doggone things, I can't see that well over here. Where is it? Overlays. Uh, if I can make sure I have the... And I can't see. I need, you know what I need? I need better glasses. <laughs> I need better glasses. Uh, make sure I, um, what I'm looking for is the actual, uh, the statements that these guys had put up before. Is this it? Give me a second, guys. I want, I want to pull up his, uh, his comments. Oh, I know what I'll do. Let's just make this bigger. Okay. Let's see if that's it. I don't think that's it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I tell you what I'll do. I'll just do it in an entirely different screen and pull up the comments that way. That way, because I, I want you all to see what his comments were in response to, to what I said. Uh, so let's go over here. Let me hit my... Give me one second. 
All right, here they are. So he went to, he, Pastor Dow, Charles, Charlie, Chuck, went to the channel and left comments. Here's some of the comments that he left. Let's pull those over. I want you guys to see these. All right, let's make them a little bit bigger. Uh, let's pull this one over here as well. Uh-oh. All right, here's some of the comments that he left. Come on, trackpad. There we go. He said, um, he, he left the comment basically asking, was I a part of a... No, I'm sorry. You know what? That's the second one. That, that Let's go to this one here. I want to pull this one up. This is the, the first one that he left. He said, I promise we ain't we ain't running from nothing. And he called me a soft man, which is, I think that's, that's, that's cute. He called me a soft man. No problem. No problem whatsoever. Uh, then he said that, what, another liar using my image and likeness. You are a nobody and you are... And you are just seeking a platform. Okay, whatever. He does a lot of name calling. Uh, he does a lot of name calling and he is, he hides, I think, around or he surrounds himself. I shouldn't say hide. That's being mean. Might be truthful, but he surrounds himself with a lot of a lot of uh, other men, football players as well, who I don't think read the scriptures as well. As a matter of fact, one guy who used to play football for the Packers, Kabir Baja Biamila, KGB is what they call him. He called me. We talked for about an hour. And he couldn't get around what I was saying. And I and I made sure, and I told him as well, make sure that you tell your pastor, your leader, he can have the email, he can have my phone number. They have my phone number. They have my email. Call me. I also, when I found out they had some little challenge, I went ahead and called the, the number they had, and I left. Uh, I can remember if I, if, I, if the, if the, the, I think the voicemail was was full or something like that, but I called back in. I think I did a little bit message, but either way, uh, I made it clear that I want to talk with them. They didn't want to talk back. Uh, he is a profanity laced kind of a. Oh, I won't I won't go into the name calling, but he uses a lot of profanity, a lot of a lot of vulgarities and so forth, a lot of insults. And I said, you know what? We're not gonna we're not gonna do this the way you want to do it. I said, now if you want to have a conversation, we can do it by phone. We can do it online before everybody, however you want to do it. Uh, or if you'd like to, because he likes to have his, you know, his YouTube trophy behind him. He's proud of that. And he wants to have his guns showing behind him. He's proud of those. I said, you, you're more than welcome to. I'll tell you what, if you come down here to Dallas, I'll fly you down here. I'll pay for the flight down here to Dallas. Uh, if you want to bring your gun, bring your gun. You, you, won't, you better not bring on the plane. But if you want to, no problem. You and I can have a conversation. No problem. If you want to film it, no problem as well. Should I bring you to the church? No. Who would do that? Who would have you come to the church and interrupt their service? I'm not going to do that. Well, we can just have this conversation here. Or you can just reply. I'll show you what I said uh, that my issues were in just a second. But also, I also turned around and I had left a couple of comments uh, after him, which he also saw. Here are these comments that he saw that I put. If I can move this thing over. <laughs> there it is. Uh, I said, let me know uh, what I lied about. Uh, you lied about 1 Timothy 3, 7, or at least uh, ignorant about the Greek. You'll see what I mean in just a second, guys, when I say ignorant about the Greek. Now, I left that comment in, in two other places where he left the comment, and so he surely saw it. So what he stated, uh, apparently he put out a challenge, a $10,000 or $20,000 challenge to refute what he's saying, and maybe he didn't hear what I said. I didn't. I don't even care about him in this issue of polygamy, or as he says, polygamy, which neither of those terms are in the Bible. So he's trying to correct someone on how how to properly say it, and we're going to find out that he didn't know his Greek. He didn't know his Hebrew either. He he didn't know either one of those. That's fine though, which I can understand why he, he really doesn't want um, to be spoken to. He he comes out with a video. Someone, as a matter of fact, more than someone, a few someone's send me sent me the link showing that he is calling us out and he mentions me specifically or the channel that we are afraid. So I want to go into what he said and then let's address it. Let's just make it clear for the public and for him. That way we can, I'm going to show you something to let you know that he is not an honest broker. He's not being very honest in what he's saying. Are you not all amazed? Are you not all uh, in awe how the silence is so deafening? 
we had all these people um, coming out against the ministry because of the biblical Hebraic way of life we chose to live. I could care less if you have five, uh, uh, a string of five women on the side. It doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter to me. I wouldn't care what you do, what you say. That was never the issue. He asked a question. They asked a question. Can we find a biblical statement, a passage in the Bible that, that comes out specifically says that having multiple wives is against uh, or illegal? Well, obviously it's illegal, but it goes in the scripture. There are no scriptures. And I said this, there are no scriptures that specifically say that you should not have multiple wives. Now, are there scriptures that tell us what the ideal way is? Sure there are. In Genesis and then after the cross. Because notice, we don't see the apostles uh, with their multiple wives. He also says you have to, you have to have a wife if you are a pastor. Biblically incorrect. He can't find one pastor that states that you have to have a wife. If that were the case, we've got two big glaring issues, really three. One, we don't hear them speaking of, of the other apostles. We hear about Peter's wife. Well, we didn't even hear about her, his wife. We hear about his mother-in-law who was sick. Well, in order to have a mother-in-law, you have to have a wife. Fine. But you know what else? We don't hear about his wife. That's Jesus. But that's, that's God in flesh. Fine. We don't hear about the other apostles. And we don't hear about Paul, who we know for a fact was single. So there clearly is no biblical mandate for a pastor, a leader, an elder to have a wife. Paul certainly did not leave that as one of the instructions. But he did mention something about a pastor and how many he can have. And this was my issue. I'll get to it in a second and we'll see how he twists this. And so if he's watching and he is, if he's listening or his people are listening and they are, then I, I again, we're going to talk about my issue again. Are there a scripture that say find one passage that states you can't have more than more than one wife? Well, after there is none. That's not the point. There are two big issues that you that I have with you and you're not going to get around. And these are my issues. And so I challenge you to refute them. We don't have to meet. Just make a public video. You don't have a problem making a video. So make the video. But let's get back to what he was saying. Uh, we usually don't interfere with people's lives unless they start coming around and messing around with, with our lives. But everybody thinks they have an opinion and they believe that that opinion is valid, even if their opinion trespasses against uh, what you know to be true. And so people come out vehemently and strong as if they are the sum of all wisdom and the epitome of all righteousness. And, and they think that they really truly have a lockdown on truth until it is challenged by someone who knows what they're talking about. And, and Martin, you're right. Listen, I, the, the last video that I made, the last time I, I, I covered this, I said, listen, there, there's no there's no need for us to even have this conversation. Um, you want to go with the back and forth and so forth, whatever. You, I don't think that, that you're behaving uh, very mature. And so I'm not really interested in having a conversation with him. I'm not. What I am interested in doing is just you answering the question. All this, this little bravado, this machismo, whatever this is, trying to be big and bad and this and that, whatever, whatever. You know, him saying that he'll go out and whoop somebody and beat somebody. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're going on 60. You're pushing 60. Uh, and, and guess what? Mature men don't have to do that. We don't have to. Let's fight it out. That's the what. Well, what's the mature man that wants to do that? And even more to the point, what's the godly mature man? Who's a godly mature man that wants to do that? But but there's a reason for this, and I'll get to the reason why we address this, and we'll let him respond, should he desire, on his own. And of course, y'all know I'm talking about biblical families, biblical marriage. Well, when we talk about biblical families, biblical marriage, people want to come out and hard and speak against us. We saw this with Vocab Malone. We saw this with, uh, I think he calls himself Smart Christian, and we saw this with some deacon over there. You know who I am talking about. I think he calls himself smart. You know, you, you know, you've been to the channel enough. You've watched enough videos. They've told you about it. Uh, your other deacons, they asked to come on and have a have a conversation. And then all of a sudden they decided not to. So, you know who I am. So, Charles, stop. Well, uh, Sakari, wherever he is, uh, somehow, some way, these people believe that they have the right to use their voice to criticize and to uh, disparage straightway. So what I did is I said, you know what? Y'all want to talk to me so bad. I'm going to give you the opportunity to talk, talk to me. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. First thing we do, we'll start out and we'll interview you. I ask on this, and you know that they all gotten a message. I want to interview Vocab Malone. I want to interview Smart Christian. And what? Interview us? Oh, fine. You want to interview me? I called. I, I, I left the message. 
you haven't responded back, pretty easy to get in contact with. The phone number hadn't changed. The email hadn't changed. Text hadn't changed. KGB, you'll hear this. Let him know. He's more than welcome if you haven't given him the number, which I know you have, uh, or at least you offered it to him. I hope you did. But he's more than welcome to call. He can, listen, he can call in right now. He can text me right now. That doesn't matter. Make a video of him calling me. Make a video of him texting me or emailing me, whatever. But anyway. And nobody ever shows up. Well, I, you know what I did? I said, you know what? There's an old saying that says, put your money where your mouth is. So I put up $10,000. Anybody in this world, scholar, especially. Now, I'm not talking about everybody who has an opinion. But you also got to have some teeth in the game, too. You've got to put up $10,000. That's why I talked about scholars and, 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 and people who are over organizations and stuff, because they should have $10,000 somewhere. And I said, well, if, y believe we're so, if you believe you're so right in what you believe and what you think, come out from your hiding places, come out from behind the camera, let's get out in the public venue in a public forum, and let's debate this thing. Debate our cause, just like the book says, like men. You put up 10 I'm, I'm, I'm curious. And I'll just tell you, brother. Sir, Charles, I don't have ten or twenty thousand dollars laying around. I don't. Am I am I wrong? Does that make me bad because I don't have ten or twenty thousand just to go ahead and put up in a debate? I don't. I'm not I'm not rich like that. Uh, and if I did, I still wouldn't do it. Why do we have to pay to have the conversation? Why not just do how about how about what the Bible says, Charles? Charles, the Bible says this in 1 Peter 3.15, he says, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts and always be being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you and who has money to put up in a bet. As long as you got money to put up in a bet, he says, make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that's in you. As long as, as, as Peter says clearly in the scriptures, Peter clearly says, as long as a person has some money to put up in a bet. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a second. My scriptures. Let me hold on. I fixed my glasses. That didn't. That's not what that says. Let's see what it said. It says, "Oh, always be ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account." Didn't say put up money. If I had a hundred thousand dollars, I wouldn't. Do. Why do we have? Why? But again, I don't have. I don't. I don't have it. I don't have it. I don't. I tell you what, though. I'll make a bet. I'll make a bet. No money. <laughs> Tony, I'll make a bet. The bet is this. If you if you refute what I'm saying, I'll join your church. I'll join your church. Ten, I put up ten. We'll find a moderator, uh, a person of truth, uh, or a few of them. We'll let them be the judge of the matter. Let the scriptures truly be the judge of the matter. And if you cannot answer soundly and you cannot answer truthfully, then it's obvious who won and who lost. Well, then... Um, I got in touch with Peter Rambo, and he actually offered an additional $10,000. So I said, you know what, that'd be nice if I could have myself and Pete Rambo, we get together and we have a discussion with maybe a couple of these scholars. I mean, after all, they got letters, they got degrees, or you got people on here who believe they're falling and stuff, and they believe they're so truthful. I know one thing, you let people sit up there and tell me that they'll debate me on the subject that they know that we're living and they disagree with, and they talk about they're gonna put up some money and see how fast Pastor Dow answers that calls. We can tell that these men, have all been found out to be liars. Their silence is showing you that they're nefarious, that they're deceivers, that they're wicked, and that they're there to be used as a tool of Satan to deceive the hearts of the people. That's a fact. Anyway, so we're gonna move on from here because it's obvious it's just not gonna happen. I would have thought $20,000 would be enough, uh, but apparently, um, I mean, man, apparently, I don't know. Maybe. No, $20,000 is enough to, uh, to make someone just talk with you. Zero is enough. Zero is what it takes. Let's you can have a conversation without having to put up money. With it, who does this? You know who does this? Some guy off the street. Man, I bet you. Y'all y'all have been to the to the barber shop. Some of y'all, some of y'all been to the barber shop and you know guys getting around selling wolf tickets and that by the way, wolf tickets for some of you young folks. That's just just talking trash, whatever. Just selling wolf tickets, who's big and who's bad or whatever. I bet you thirty dollars. I bet you fifty dollars. What really? Why not just open? How you know what? How long would it have taken? Would it have taken you just to open the scriptures and refute what I'm saying in the scriptures? It would have taken a lot less time than it would have for you to make that little silly video. Now, lest he understands or has forgotten, this was my my point. I'll go back to my point. By the way, do I think that the Bible wants men to have multiple wives? Do I think that's the case? No. We're going to even look at a passage where Jesus says so. 
does the Bible come out and strictly condemn it? No. But he tells us something that's better. Now, I won't go all into there because I've, I've done so in other passages. I mean, other passages. In, other, in another video, I'll leave that alone. But I want to play something that he says that gets to my bigger point. And I'm going to ask him again. If you refute this, if you prove that you were right and I'm wrong, then I'll join your church. Forget the 10,000, 20, I'll join your church. The New Testament is not a place where you start law. Come on, Shep. Come on. The Come problem on. Is, is, is these people are not properly interpreting scripture. We're going to segue and go. Now, my big issue is the law. They believe. They'll say that we are saved by grace, but says that we're supposed to keep the law. Let's have that debate. Let's have that conversation. I'll join your church if you refute me. If you're ready to refute me, I will join your church if you prove that we are supposed to keep the law. I'm going to go and consult Paul on this to see so. And I would, I would just ask you to read Galatians and the book of Hebrews. Do that. Now, the other issue that I had was, and this is the point that I brought out, because if you can mess up, and I don't know if he messed it up, I think he intentionally twists this, and this is the point that I brought up, that let's just see if your Greek understanding is proper. It's not. You lied or you misunderstood. Either way, it was deceptive or received deceptively to the people who were hearing this, and that's this issue of this husband of one wife, what the word one in first timothy three means because we was on this meal thing right what a bitch by the way the word the word for one in first timothy three is the word for meal so let's see what he says hey, Mr. the husband of one wife let's see like we did before because they don't research they they don't do any searching they don't check things out they don't look behind the words that's presented in english they're lazy they don't do it on. But so he says we don't look behind the words that are presented in English. We're lazy. OK. OK. We don't look behind the words. In other words, we don't look at the Hebrew and the Greek over here on, on this on this particular channel. The audience here is is has never heard the audience here has never the guy. You, you guys, you've never heard me cover the Hebrew or the Greek. Well, if you haven't heard me cover the Greek, you're going to hear it today. You too, Mr. M Mr. Dowell. I don't know why I was going to say Mr. McDowell, as in coming to America. It's in my head. What really mean? Just because something is presented to you in English, you better start using some self autonomy. Yes, Just because you yell doesn't mean that you, that you, listen, you're still wrong. I don't care how loud you get. If your volume goes up or goes down, if you change your octave, doesn't matter. You're still wrong. You better start using some independent thinking and really truly start looking behind these words. Because the last time I checked, yeah. The Messiah, when he was in pale, they had Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. You better know what the words mean. First Timothy 3, verse 2 said, the bishop must be blameless, the husband of the first wife. Did you guys catch that? He says he must be the husband of the first wife. Hmm. You mean to tell, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let, let me get my coffee cup out. <clears throat> I've got to, and every time I hear this, I've got to digest this. You must be the husband of the first wife. By the way, ladies, how would how how would you feel if you were the husband of the first? Were you the first wife? Do, do y'all think that that is that's biblical? We're gonna look at that. We're gonna look at that. Somebody's somebody's harassing you, uh, Maria. Uh, well, uh, the moderators will deal with them. But he says, he says, he must be the husband of the first wife. Oh, by the way, that's them saying that the pastor has to have at least one. Got to have one. Let's go back in here. Let's go back and hear this again. This might, either this is utter nonsense and foolishness. It's a lie. Or guys, we have new revelation. Fresh. Re this is almost, this is almost a charismatic revelation. Fresh wind, fresh word, a new word, a new rhema word, something declared from heaven that we never knew about. Thank you, Charlie Dowell, for enlightening us. Let's let's hear that again. You're getting that right. You know what the words mean. First Timothy 3, verse 2 said, the bishop must be blameless, the husband of the first wife. You're getting that right. Everybody get it. 
He must at least have one. He must at least have one. You got people out here preaching and teaching, like Pastor said, and ain't got no family to. Now, before I go to tearing this apart, <laughs> and it's not difficult. It's not difficult. Matter of fact, you know, you, after this, I told one of his elders, that's KGB, who I also told him that his other wife was a side chick as well. He didn't like that, but hey, the truth is the truth. But I told him, th this is my argument. Go back and give that to your leader and see if he can. Now, he can't defeat it, which is why he, he, he doesn't want to have this conversation. Why do I say that he doesn't want to have the conversation? Why is he saying that I, he specifically mentioned this channel and me, that I don't want to have this conversation. Why? Why? Hmm. Well, let's figure this out. Again, I have tried to reach out to no avail. What I'm going to do is show you that they don't want me to reach out. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to this. Let's see. Let's put this on the screen. I'm going to go over to there. Here. You guys see that? All right. That's, this is my, this is the Smart Christian YouTube channel or what have you, not the channel, but you know, when I, when I click on, uh, and I go to his, I go to his, this, this, uh, it's not going to have the same video. And what I, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put in a comment. I'm going to put in a comment. Now, as you see, I've, I've done it before. I've done it before. Now I'm going to put another one right here. Let's just, there it is. I'll, I'll put that comment in. All right. There it is. There it is. Right there. One second ago. You all see that? Just make sure this is live. Now, what I'll do is I grab the phone and I have it under my, you all can't see this, but it's under my wife's account. So what I'll do is right there, doesn't say anything, but I'll just do this and see if my comment propagates. Nope. 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 It says somebody named Paul Shalom 17 minutes ago. Won't do it. Won't do it. However, let me go to my own, my other, my other personal account. Uh, this is my, my Corey Miner account. All right. That's it right there. Same video, guys. Same video. And you can just look in the top right hand corner. You see the little red. Be smart. That's me. Now, let me just type in over here what it says. Let me just type in something. No, you know what? I won't type in anything. Let me just repropagate it over here. Go to top comments and then let's go to uh, newest. Same thing. Now, let me just type in on my wife's. Let me just put in, um, I don't know. Let's put in the little laughing emoji. Let's do that. I just said, uh oh, what is it? Something about the, the network. Hold on. All right, there it is. So, how does this thing not going? What, is she blocked? <laughs> Let's see. Hold on one second. Sort by top. Sort by newest. Let's see if hers. Okay. So let's go back over here. If you look and see, that is Sheree Miner. That's my wife. That's her comment. Let's go back over to this channel, to my other uh, channel, and let's let's see if it shows up over here. Sort by comments, top comments. Move it off of that, and let's go back to newest. Yep, it's there. It's there. Huh. What are we to make of this? No, she's not blocked. She made it in. She will. I, you know what? She will be today, though. I can promise you she'll be. The, what are we to make of that? What are we to make of that? You mean to tell me you you? Wait a minute. Wait, I, Charlie, I can't believe this. Big bad Charlie with all the football players around. You got an offensive line around you. You mean to tell me? You mean to tell me? You block me. You block me, but you're telling everyone that you wanted to have this conversation and I'm afraid. OK, I get it. Can I show you guys why he doesn't want to have this conversation? Let's go to the passage that he brings up. Let's go to the passage that he brings up this first husband. Oh, I type, I typed in for some reason I typed in first Corinthians. It's first Timothy three. Let's go to first Timothy three. There it is. All right. Let's put it on the screen. It says, it is a trustworthy statement if any man, 
aspires to be the office of an overseer. It is a fine work he has done. An overseer then must be above reproach, the husband of one wife. Now, the word here for husband, I mean, for one, is this word over here, mia or mias. Now, this word mias, if you look down in the bottom left-hand corner, it's derived from, from another word. It is derived from the word heis. In Greek, this word heis can, can, it's also, um, you know how a word can kind of morph, like if we say people or persons, it's the same thing, but it just, it, it changes its form. You have that in Greek. Heis is the same as mia or mian. It's the same as an or anas or anos. Same word. It means the exact same thing. Now, he says that this word mia also means, it means first. Where does he get that from? Well, I'll give you an example. He goes to Acts 20 and 7. Let's go to Acts 20 and 7. Acts 27 on the first day of the week, and the word for the word first is the Greek word mia. So he says that this word mia means first. It does not mean first. We translate it as first because it's one of. Here it is. It is, let's put it back on the screen. This is in the genitive, and so it is mia ton sabaton. The way that you would translate this in English in a rough translation, would be one of the Sabbath. And how it's written, that's not good English. So how do you put it in good English? Knowing what they're speaking of, it would be the first day of the week. Sabbath or Sabbaton is week. And so the one of the week, who says that? What day is it? This is the one of the week. No, the first day of the week. That's how that goes. It's just translated to help us to make it makes good sense or good English, as we should say. Now, here's a problem. If you just look up the word first, 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 which is what he did, you're going to find something with the word first. The word first, if you want to indicate an actual order of things in terms of priority, the first, which is what he's trying to make out of 1 Timothy 3, here it is. If he just drops down the same chapter, same chapter in Acts, drop down to verse 18. He says, and when they had come to him, he said to them, you yourselves know from the first day. Well, look what the word first is, how you say first. Protes. We get our word English from the prototypical or prototype Protas or protase, that's the word first in English. Now, you can also use the word first if, if you understand that's what they're trying to convey to you by using the word mia or han or heis or anas, either one of them. Now, how do you know that mia is always or almost always going to be translated as one? Well, let's go to when Jesus is speaking. Remember, as a matter of fact, let's use an example of when Jesus is speaking regarding marriage. How about that? Let's go to Mark chapter 10. Uh, let's say, you know what? This is Jesus speaking about this bill of divorce. I won't, we won't go through all of it. Let's go to, just go to verse eight. Jesus says this, and the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. What do you guys think the word for one flesh is? Yeah, I'm sorry, Jonathan. You know what I did? Uh, I accidentally deleted my Greek warning. <laughs> and I just haven't had time to go back and pull it back up. I've got it on this other computer. I just, it, it would take me 10 seconds to send it over to this computer. I just haven't done it. <laughs> Shame on me. I, I don't know what I, I don't know how I did it. And I it again, I, I will fix that. I will fix that. But let's go back and look at what this Greek word for one is. And the two shall become, huh, look at that word, mia. And then to say it again, and they shall no longer be two, but one. What's the Greek word? Mia. Huh. But I thought you said, Charlie, Ch Charles, that the word mia means first. 
So should we take this that the two shall become first flesh? Or how about when he says one, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, the, the one faith, by the way, in that one, it uses all three uh, terms for the word one, all Greek terms, which is the same one. But it says one faith. Mio, is it the first faith? No, one. All throughout the New Testament, you're going to keep seeing this word one used as mia or, describe, or, or from the Greek word mia. And if you put first in there, it just won't make any sense. But Corey, the first day of the week, yeah. Mia ton sabaton, which is one of the Sabbath or one of the week. We don't speak like that. So we've got to make it make good English sound like good English. <laughs> I'll never forget, by the way, there was one guy. We were in prison and we were in the law library. And there was a, there was a, a old country white guy who went up to this uh, uh, Hispanic guy. <laughs> and he says, excuse me, you speak, you speak good English? <laughs> it's funny. Everyone looked at him. I guess he thought that the, that the Hispanic guy just didn't speak English at all. But this Hispanic guy was actually a lawyer who was, I think he's, I think he's from Austin or from Houston or someplace. I'm not sure, but it was just funny. But this is trying to make it make or sound like good English. <laughs> Are you with me? So what he did was he went and found the word first and there it is. So my response to you, Mr. Dowell, you don't even have to unblock me. I don't really want to talk to you. Keep your $10,000 because you, you would lose it. But my statement is, can you prove that the word Mia means first and that the, the proper definition or the proper translation of first Timothy three is that he's the husband of the first wife or the husband of one wife. Prove your point. You cannot. You cannot. You 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 couldn't find a, a person who just bought a Greek book to believe that. And so that's my that's my first reputation that I'm asking you to do. The second is prove with scriptures that we are required or we're supposed to keep the law, as you all say. If you can do that, either matter of fact, if you can do those two things, I will join your church. Matter of fact, I'll start my own. I'll I'll start a straightway Dallas. <laughs> I'll, and so yeah, that's what it is. It's 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 him thinking that. Let me throw this money out there. No one no one's afraid of your money. To be perfectly honest. By the way, I noticed that you didn't also take up uh, Michael Brown's debate request on Hebrew. I noticed you didn't sign up for that. I understand. Why would you? Why would you stick your neck out there? Only to see all your people, and only for your people to see it get cut off. What you have to do is save face and make sure people think that they're scared of you. That's not the case. And so, if you want, somebody says you are a superior trash talker. I'm one of the best that ever did it. <laughs> I'm up there. <laughs> I'm up. Listen, where we came from, you, you better be able to hold your own. And then when you go into prison, they, they listen, they will talk some trash to you. They will talk. Matter of fact, did I see AS in, in the chats? Did I see AS in the chats? We went to the TV room one day in prison. By the way, this in prison, this is where most of the fights start in, in, in the TV room, in the television room where most of the fights start. And I walk in there. I walk in there and what they do is, it's almost a lot of these guys will look for me. Come on, Corey, the Muslims speaking. Corey, what do you think about all these sex offenders going to church? You got all these people. I said, well, why shouldn't they go to church? If, if there's if there's anybody, if there's anybody, in, if, if there's anybody who should go to church, I mean, if, you're, if you feel like these people need help, well, won't the church offer that? The same reason why liars go there, the same reason why a rapist would go there, the same reason why uh, a thief would go there, the same reason why a drug dealer would go there, because there's only one person that I know that can change you change you, redeem you, and put you on a glorious path to him. There's only one one that I know that. You say that these people need help and so on and so forth or whatever. So yeah, you know what? All right. And then they're messing with me. And I'm trying, listen, I came in to watch uh, NFL today. I came in to watch the, watch the football game or something like that. You want to mess with me? Okay, fine. All right. So they would, <laughs> these are Muslims now. These, these, are, these are Muslims. I said, you're right. You are absolutely right. I think it is abomination for someone to 
look at or to prey on babies, to do that to children. You are absolutely right. I think, what'd you say? And I'm talking to one, one of the guys, Sean. Sean, what'd you say? They, all these sex offenders, you said they, they should all be tied up and killed, huh? All right. Well, I believe we should start with the biggest and most famous sex offender, that being Muhammad. And they all got upset. They all got upset with me. What? Yeah, Muhammad. I mean, if you're against sex offenders, Muhammad was the biggest, was the, was the grandest of all. I mean, why not? He's got almost two billion followers. Uh, and he is the, he's known for that. He doesn't even hide it. Doesn't even hide it. What are you talking about? What? Aisha. She was nine. Yeah, but he didn't tell until, if you, listen, either you thought that he didn't consummate it until she was nine or 12. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Oh, by the way, all the places on the planet where it is legal or you won't be prosecuted by having a child, a baby as a bride are in Muslim majority, Muslim ruled countries. Sorry. I think you might want to be quiet. After a while of hitting somebody where it hurts, they learn to leave you alone. And so that's kind of the, the issue. And so I would say to you, Mr. Dowell, Charles, I'm sorry, Pastor Dowell, if you want to have this conversation, be honest about it. If you actually want to have this conversation, you can call me, you can text me, you can email me. If you don't want to have this conversation, I've moved on because I don't really want to engage with you uh, with the vile, profane language. We don't ever have to talk again. We don't ever have to. Where, where is he at? He is in. Is he in? Where is he? Is he? Oh, he's in Tennessee. I believe he's in Tennessee. I believe that's where he's in, in Tennessee. I think that's somewhere in the South, Tennessee. But we don't ever have that. We don't have to have this conversation at all. We don't have to talk. We don't have to meet. We don't have. If you want to refute what I'm saying, make a video. Put it out there. Guys, this is why Corey Miner over the Smart Christian channel is wrong. I'm disproving his point. I'm proving that the Greek absolutely and always means first. And once he does, then I will <laughs> convert. <laughs> There's no danger, guys. There's no danger at all, which is why his elders wouldn't have this conversation, which is why he wouldn't respond. He said, I ain't running. You mean tell me this happened, by the way, guys, this happened, what, two, three months ago? Two, three months ago. You just now, you just now making this video. All right. I understand. I understand. So anyway, guys, I've got to run. I've got to prepare for something this, this, this evening. I will see you all this evening. But Charles, call me. Call me, Charles. What do you think about people who won't answer that call and put their money where their money?